Well, good evening, friends. Pro-Life leader Frank Pavone here, National Director of Priests for Life. Welcome to Praying for America. You know, I'm on the road this week. Lots of different events in Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas for pro-life and then up to New York. And uh, because so many of you uh, had so many great things to say about a couple of our recent broadcasts, I wanted to uh, bring for tonight's program uh, a re-air of one of those recent shows in which I talked about a central question. Why is President Trump being persecuted the way that he is? Is that just about him or is that about the direction that this nation is taking? Is that about him or is it about us? Is it about the freedom of elections? Is it about liberty in America? Is it about what our future elections are going to be like? Is it about weaponization of government? Is it about tyranny? Is it about stopping the agenda of the left? You already know the answer to a lot of these questions, but so many of you had so many uh, good things to say about that broadcast that I wanted to bring it to you again to the, tonight. And uh, let's, uh, let's look at what I had to say in regard to uh, that important question. Why are we seeing so much persecution of President Trump? Yes, we will, friends, and that's why we are here on Praying for America. I'm pro-life leader Frank Pavone, National Director of Priests for Life and uh, proudly serving uh, President Trump's both of his campaigns on both the Catholic and pro-life advisory uh, committees. Great to be with you here tonight. We are making America great again at a time where we see unprecedented attacks on this country and on its 45th president, Donald J. Trump. And we see the reason why. We know the reason why. We have known it for many, many years. Because from the time that he declared that he wanted to be president, those on the radical left and those in the establishment polite class uh, uh, politicians said, no, 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 no. We can't have this man do this. We're going to look at why that is the case. We're going to look at it, as we do always on this program, from the light of the Word of God. The Scriptures enlighten us as to what's going on in our times, uh, what's going on in this battle between good and evil. And I want to start, therefore, with a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. It comes to us from... uh, chapter 17, and let's delve into this and ask the question, why, oh why, are the people persecuting President Trump the way they are? Why are they doing this? What are they afraid of? What are they up to? That is what we're going to talk about here. So Acts 17, starting right at the beginning of it. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom. And on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. And some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great many of the devout Greeks, and not a few of the leading women. But the Jews were jealous. Taking some wicked men of the rabble, they formed a mob, set the city in an uproar, and attacked the house of Jason, seeking to bring them out to the crowd. And when they could not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city authorities, shouting, These men, who have turned the world upside down, have come here also, and Jason has received them. And they are all acting against the decrees of Caesar saying that there is another king, Jesus. And the people in the city authorities were disturbed when they heard these things. Let us pray. Father, we thank you and we praise you that we are among the people who have turned this world upside down because we are the body of Christ. We are the followers of the one who has turned the kingdom of Satan and of hell upside down, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through his gospel. Jesus Christ, the one who has broken in to human history and has brought about the day of the Lord, that great and terrible day when the kingdom of evil is shaken up and turned upside down. 
symbolized by the earthquake that took place on the day that he died and the earthquake that occurred on the morning that he rose, shaking the earth to its core, bringing into being the kingdom of light and of truth and of love, chasing away darkness and falsehood and hatred. We praise you, Lord, that we are the body of Christ. Yes, indeed, the world is turned upside down by Christians because we stand with the light which has come into the world, but some preferred darkness because their deeds were evil. We are not afraid to stand against them. We are not afraid to disrupt them. We are not afraid to be outside of the mainstream, outside of what is considered normal in polite society. We are not afraid to be outside the establishment. That's exactly how this great movement of Christianity began. This is how it must continue. So we thank you, Lord, for leaders who are not afraid to lead, for allies who are not afraid to fight, for presidents who are not afraid to stand up for what is good for America, no matter what the cost. We see such a president in Donald J. Trump, and we praise you, Lord, that once again, The battle is engaged, and he is not going away, not backing down, not compromising in any way. May you give each one of us the same kind of strength, the same kind of conviction, the same kind of perseverance, the same kind of self-sacrifice, not only for this country, but for your kingdom, O God, which is the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Amen. Why are they doing what they're doing? We got this fake indictment coming out of uh, Alvin Bragg, disgraced man in New York. We've got this uh, nonsense that just came out out of Miami uh, with this, uh, this second indictment. We got another one. Mark my words. Mark President Trump's words will be coming out. This one uh, will be coming out of, uh, uh, of Atlanta end of July, beginning of August, about the phone call he made with the Georgia Secretary of State. Find me the votes. Find me the votes. You know what? That's what a candidate is supposed to say. Find me the votes. doesn't say invent the votes. doesn't say make them up. doesn't say fabricate them. It says find them. Well, that's just another way of saying that every vote should count. But no, like they've done with all these other cases, they're going to twist it, turn it inside out, stretch it, fabricate it, put a square peg into a round hole. These people think we're idiots. We see what they're doing. We see what they've been doing from day one. So many people who admire Donald J. Trump, tried to ingratiate themselves with him, considered themselves friends, considered themselves uh, uh, cheerleaders, if you will, admired what he was doing in New York. The day he announced his candidacy for the Republican nomination for president, all that changed. And so many of these people, all of a sudden, the admiration turned into anger. The support turned into opposition. And so strong was it that a whole campaign organized effort began spying on his campaign and trying from the very beginning to plan how to get him impeached. But it was all a hoax. It was not based on the Constitution. It was the first completely partisan impeachment in American history. Both of them were. And it was like we, they, they, they couldn't even come up with a, with, a, with a crime. And so it has been for all of these things. The most investigated man in American history, and they continue to come up with nothing. As he says to his friends, you know, I must be the most honest guy around. Why haven't they been able to come up with anything? And this is what's frustrating the left, getting them angry and now getting them worried. The anxiety deepens day by day because this entire campaign that has preceded his election followed him throughout his administration, 
continued to follow him after he left office and is now leading into this next campaign, they don't cease, and yet they don't succeed. And what's worrying them is that we who support President Trump, because we support America, we're getting stronger, not weaker. We're getting more united, not dispersed. We, by all indications, are winning, not losing. And they don't know what to do. They've tried everything. And you know what? Let me tell you right now. You can bring down the indictment out of Georgia. You can bring another indictment for, from Washington, D.C. For the, for the January 6th events. You can bring 100 more indictments. It's not going to change. The only thing that's going to change is that the support for President Trump will go even higher. Let me look at here uh, these uh, one of these latest polls here, the morning consult poll from the other day. The week before this indictment comes out of Miami, his polling within the Republican uh, primary, 55% support. So the indictment comes out, what do you figure happens? It jumps up to 59. It's going to continue going up, friends. Let me tell you the core of of my message here tonight. Very simple. What's the reason that he's being persecuted like this? With the law being twisted beyond recognition. What's the reason? Because the left knows that he is their biggest threat. This is the only thing that the left is right about. They're not right about morals. They're not right about America. They're not right about our history. They're not right about anything except one thing, that Donald Trump is their biggest threat. That if he again becomes president, their agenda comes to a grinding halt. That if he becomes president, this plan for globalism, and absorbing national identity. And, oh, of course they're trying to break down American exceptionalism and redefine our history and look at us as a racist, evil nation and and, and lower our our respect in the world community and and get rid of the dollar and make it worth practically nothing. Of course they want to do all this because they want some one-world globalist control These people are all about control. This fanatical, radical, sick left, they're all about control. They want government control of every aspect of your life, everything. And you know where it starts? It starts with redefining you when you're in the womb. You're not even a person. You can have your arms and legs chopped off and your head taken out in pieces by the abortionists. Oh, they're all in with that. They're all in with that because that's the biggest form of control. But then it gets, it goes on from there goes much further. The children are born, okay, you indoctrinate them in school. These transgender activists, they're not interested in gender. They couldn't care less. They're interested in separating children from their parents. They're interested in putting a wedge in the family and cracking it apart. That's what they're doing. Because by controlling the children, by confuse the hell out of them, so that they, they don't know who even who they are, and, and, and therefore, they'll go to these leftist radicals uh, to find out. Instead of to their parents, this is what they do. Because the family and the church are the biggest obstacles in the way of, of, of ruining traditional Judeo-Christian values, which are what support freedom for the people. Because remember, in Judeo-Christian uh, worldview, We are sons and daughters of God. We are loved by God. We have access to God, and therefore nobody can rule over us. But these people are all about control and ruling over us, so they got to get the family out of the way, and they got to get religion out of the way. That's why they redefine religious freedom to mean discrimination. That's why they try to squelch religious freedom. That's why they try to destroy the family. That's why they destroy education. They think your children are their children. And so they want to redefine education. And oh, never mind about reading, writing, or arithmetic. 
Sex, sex, sex. Racism, racism, racism. Hatred, hatred, hatred. Division, transgender, all this indoctrination. America's evil. You see what they're doing? Break down all this stuff so that they can set up their control over everything tax and regulate small businesses out of existence, destroy the border so we don't have a country. Let all this evil come into the country and don't even enforce laws in our communities, never mind about law and order, defund the police. Morality, throw it out the window. That's racist if you think one thing is right, one thing is wrong, one thing is true, one thing is false. They even consider mathematics to be racist. These people are sick. But this is what they do. This is the vision of America that they have. This is the vision of America that they want to impose on you. Sex-saturated, power-centralized citizens pursued by the FBI and by tens of thousands of IRS agents. All of us told what to think because of their in control, and it has absolutely no resemblance to what our founding fathers envisioned for this country or to what the Judeo-Christian ethic envisions for truth and morality. Absolutely no resemblance to anything like that. And then add on top of that the weaponization of government. There, If they have the levers of power, understand something, brothers and sisters. We look at it, this and we say, oh, there's a two-tiered system of justice. President Trump does something, he doesn't even do anything wrong, and yet for what he's doing, they make it into a crime, while when Clinton or Biden do the same thing, it's no crime at all, and we say, well, that's hypocrisy, that's a two-tiered system of justice. You know what? They don't care. And they don't care even that they appear to be that way. It's not about fairness and justice and and the rule of law or the rule of the Constitution. For them, it's not about that, friends. It's about power. They have power, and they want to show you that they have it. The Biden, you look at Biden, you look at Hillary Clinton, and when they're confronted with what's going on here now, or when they're asked about it, they laugh. Hillary Clinton selling hats that talk about her emails. This is a joke. This is supposed to be a joke. That you've got classified emails on a private server that that, 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 that God knows who's accessing them. Foreign countries, enemy, who knows? And you, and yet you think it's a laughing matter to start selling hats over. Biden, did you see the idiot the other day? Somebody asks him about uh, 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 what's going on here, and you know, but he's in he's in big trouble with these FBI informants and 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 the and the tape recordings that exist and the documents that have come forward to Congress. He turns around and he laughs. This is the kind of America that these people believe in. Why are they persecuting Donald J. Trump? Because he has proven to be the only one who can stand in their way. He's already proven it. You look at the pages and pages. I've shown you a printout on these programs, 51 pages in small print, of the monumental historic accomplishments of his administration. On every single one of those pages, you see the agenda of the radical left the globalist, anti-God, anti-faith, anti-life, anti-freedom people being decimated, their agenda being destroyed, those are the accomplishments of the Trump administration, and they know that he is more prepared than ever to do it again. More prepared than ever. He knows a whole lot more now than when he first went into office. He tells us he didn't realize how deep the deep state is. He didn't realize how swampy the swamp is. Now he does, and he knows who's who. And he is going to be more relentless than ever in draining that swamp. The way he's been saying it, he says, look, I get into office, I'm going to obliterate the deep state. It's going to be obliterated. All the corruption is going to be fully exposed and dealt with, prosecuted. 
People who are in the administration who are more creatures of the swamp than, than, than serving the will of the people by serving the elected president and his agenda, they're going to be fired. He's serious. And when he gets in a second time, he's not going to have to worry about re-election. He's going to be one of the freest presidents and one of the strongest that we've ever had, the strongest that we've ever had. He's not going to have to worry about a re-election. And he's going into terrain that he's been on before and he knows what he's facing and he knows the battle and he knows the enemy and he knows how to use the, the illegitimate constitutional powers of the executive branch to do what? Unlike this agenda of control and destruction that I'm outlining very briefly here about what the left that you know as well as I do, unlike that, like he said in his inaugural address, I this is not about power coming from one party to another. This is about power coming from Washington, D.C. to you, the American people. This is not some kind of idolatry. We don't look at him as a god or a political savior. There is one savior. He acknowledges it just like we do, and the savior's name is Jesus Christ. But this is a man who knows how to lead a country in which sovereignty resides with the people. Not with the man who sits in the Oval Office. Not with the people, men and women who sit in Congress. Not with the men and women who sit on the Supreme Court. The sovereignty resides with the people and each and everything that Donald J. Trump has done and advocated for and that his administration has accomplished puts that into effect. That the power resides with the people. That you let people live in freedom. That you let them express their religious beliefs. That you allow children to be born, that you allow parents to choose how they're going to educate those children once they are born, that you allow small businesses to flourish and thrive in an economy never seen before for its diversity and its strength, that you allow our communities, our families, our country, our borders to be protected and strong, that you allow our military to flourish and be strong, that you allow us not to be bullied on the world stage, but to have the respect of the rest of the world, instead of to be, to be the embarrassment that the Democrats have caused America to be around the world. This is what President Trump accomplishes and what he's going to accomplish in the second term beyond our wildest imagination because again, he knows the terrain. He's not going to need to make any friends. He's going to be there to serve our needs. He's not answerable to elites. He's not answerable to special interest groups, people who, who he, like he always said, I could call up people and get, get millions of dollars of support, but I'm not going to do that because then they're going to call me back someday and they're going to say, hey, you got to make this decision or that decision or help me out this way or that way in your policy decision. He says, no, I'm not answering to you. I'm answering to the American people. And this obliterates the, the agenda of the left. And that's why they're so afraid. They are right in one thing and one thing only. That if President Trump gets into office, their agenda comes to a screeching halt. Domestically and internationally. Had Clinton, had Hillary Clinton, I'm going to get to something that she said in a moment here. Had she gotten into office, that was going to be like, okay, now we are home free for this new globalist agenda, pro-abortion anti-religious freedom. We are set. They were ready to go the final uh, lap of the, of the race to get their anti-God, anti-family agenda into place. And boy, were they angry when it didn't happen. It was stolen from them at the last minute. And they didn't know what was going on. And now, here's what's scaring them. It looks like it's going to happen again. And they don't, they're don't. trying to stop it every which way they can. And they can't. Because the more it, 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 heaps of, of persecution they pour on President Trump to stop him from even getting the nomination, the more support he gets. And this is going to continue to be the way it is, folks. On the other side, if you don't see this, you better wake up. And, 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 and folks that are on the Republican side, you got to realize... We don't want politicians who are more interested in being able to go to the cocktail parties and the polite lunches and would rather 
do that and 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 lose on the on the on the key battles, but be gracious about it, rather than go into the arena and fight the way that President Trump does, and the way that he has taught so many others to do. This is the dividing line. It's not even so much what positions you believe in. It's how you handle the battle. We got a lot of people that they have the right positions. And they can even articulate them. But they're establishment politicians. Many of them have wrong positions on things. But the problem is that they're wanting to please the establishment instead of being willing to be an outsider. Somebody who wasn't trained in all the political correctness. That was the benefit of him not being a politician. He wasn't trained in how to beat around the bush. Wasn't trained in how to compromise, although he's the best negotiator. But I'm talking about compromising on on what you know is right to do for the American people, compromising on principles. He wasn't trained in how to do that. These politicians are experts in that. We don't want them anymore. That's not the kind of leadership we need. So the left plus the establishment on the right, are scared to death that we're going to end up having this man as the 47th president. Well, I got news for you guys. You're right to be scared. You're right to be scared. You can't take him out of the race. They think that with these... these, um, they think that with these indictments that somehow they're going to disqualify him. Some Americans think that it should disqualify him. But let me remind you of a little document called the United States Constitution. It lays out the requirements for the office of presidency. And here's what it says. No person except a natural born citizen shall be eligible to the office of president. Neither shall any person be eligible to that office who shall not have attained to the age of 35 years and been 14 years a resident within the United States. you hear anything in there about indictments? Nor shall any person who has been indicted... No, it doesn't say that. You hear anything in there about conviction? You hear anything in there about being in jail? You can run for president from a jail cell. You can be a president. The Constitution is what it is. You want to change it? Go through the process of amending it. But don't try to weaponize our system of law enforcement and courts and and, and, uh, uh, Department of Justice and all of this. Stop. Stop. Because it doesn't fit the Constitution. It doesn't work. And that's why you're not going to succeed. So Hillary Clinton comes up with her Remarks the other day. Let me let me read these and comment. She's talking about this phenomenon again that scares them to death about the support for President Trump just getting stronger and stronger despite all this garbage. And she says, "Oh, their efforts to defend this man are truly beyond anything that I have ever thought possible in our country. It is so profoundly disturbing that this could have could have been the break." This could have been the opportunity to say, you know, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. We really appreciate it. But this is kind of serious and we're not going to continue to defend you. But no, they're all in again. The psychology of this is so hard for me to fully grasp. Oh, would you please give me a break? It's so hard for you to fully grasp, Mrs. Clinton. Let me try to help you grasp it. We don't want you controlling our children. Do you grasp that? We don't want you telling us we can't worship the way we want to worship, not only in church, but in the workplace. We have freedom of religion. Can you grasp that, perhaps? We don't want babies dismembered in the sixth, seventh, and eighth month of pregnancy. Oh, no, I'm not even going to ask because I know you can't grasp that. 
Can you grasp maybe that we, we love this country and, and, and we want to keep a country that maybe has a border? Can you grasp that we want a strong economy? And President Trump has given us the strongest we've ever had. Maybe you can grasp that. What's wrong with you and your colleagues and your friends and your allies? What's wrong with you? This is not about this man, their efforts to defend this man. It's about this nation. It's about this flag and what it represents. It's about freedom. This man happens to be the one who's defending it. This is not some kind of cult like you seem to think it is. He has said it many times. We worship God, not government. What is wrong with you that you can't grasp that, Mrs. Clinton? It's about worshiping God. We don't worship any man or woman. This is not a cult of personality. This is a conviction of freedom. No, but no, oh no, I can't possibly grasp it. I don't understand. I don't understand. Why do they defend this man? Maybe if you spent five minutes defending what is really freedom and what America is really about, maybe you'd begin to understand it just a little bit. But you don't do that, do you? You're too deep in your lies. You're too deep in your, weapon, your own weaponization of government. You're too deep in that. Of course you don't understand. Because if you did, even for one minute, you would have never done the kind of things that you did. I can't understand. Never thought this was possible in our country. No, 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 no. That's not for you to say. That's for us to say. That we never thought it would be possible in this country for the political opposition of one party to spy on, weaponize the FBI against, turn the Constitution on its head to prosecute, and invent crimes against their chief political opponent. This is what we never thought could happen in this country. Not the support of someone who has brought this country to its safest, most secure, most respected, most prosperous, most free status ever. That is President Donald Trump. Don't give me this nonsense, Mrs. Clinton, or any of you Democrats. I don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. We know what this country stands for, and we recognize communists and Marxists when we see them. The other night when President Trump spoke, just hours after this uh, indictment was handed down in Miami, he spoke to a crowd of enthusiastic supporters there in New Jersey, and he used the word communist. And it wasn't just off the top of his head. This was in a written speech that he was reading from the teleprompter. This was prepared by thoughtful people who know exactly what's going on. The other side knows it too. And they're scared to death that this man is going to stop their agenda. We together. You know, President Trump has said, all of us, all of us are running to be the 47th president of the United States. That sums it up. You heard him say that. we got to be repeating that. He says, it's not just me running to be the 47th president. All of us will be. That exactly goes back to what I told you, what he said in his inaugural address. It's about power in the hands of us, the people. That's why they're doing what they're doing, friends. And like he said the other night, they're trying to take away my freedom because I won't let them take away yours. They're trying to silence me because I won't let them silence you. So let's not be silenced. Let's not let our freedom be taken. Let's be more active than ever in this election. And let's let the whole world understand why we stand with President Trump and why this presidential race has become much more than a presidential race. This has become much more than a contest between Donald J. Trump and, 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 and the other candidates. It's much bigger than that. It's even bigger than a, a contest between uh, Democrats and Republicans. Brothers and sisters, let's help our fellow citizens understand that what has crystallized here through no fault of our own 
is that it is literally a choice between the America we've received and have always believed in and a completely radicalized, incoherent, unrecognizable version of America that these radical lunatics want to impose on us. That's what this election now is about. And those who stand for freedom, whether you like President Trump or not, whether you support him or not, it has become a choice now to stand with this man and therefore to stand against those who are trying to destroy America or to oppose this man and then effectively be on the side of those who are trying to impose this radical agenda. This is what it has become. None of us has made it that way by our own choice. This is where we're at. And that's why we see this kind of unmitigated, unprecedented persecution of a former president and a political candidate. So let's go back to prayer. Father, we thank you for this nation. We thank you for freedom. We thank you for the wisdom to understand what is going on right now. Father, we are not better than anyone else. We are just servants of you, and you, by your grace and by your spirit, have allowed us to see this and are giving us the strength and the determination and the resolve to fight it, Lord God, just like you give to President Trump, as is so evident to us all. Continue to bless us. Continue to preserve us in freedom. Let's pray now as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thanks, friends, for joining us. Father Frank Pavone here of Priests for Life. Follow me at FR Frank Pavone on all the social media, FR Frank Pavone, starting with Truth Social, of course. And uh, thank you to Getter for carrying our program. Uh, Right Side Broadcasting, of course. Follow them, too. And uh, join us again tomorrow night for Praying for America. Durham probe into the Russia collusion hoax. President Trump has just been impeached on both Article The one only and... president of the United States to be impeached for a second the January time. 6th committee releasing its final 845 page report. Former President Donald Trump has been indicted. Remember this nothing worth doing ever, ever, ever came easy. Following your convictions means you must be willing to face criticism from those who lack the same courage to do what is right. Relish the opportunity to be an outsider. Embrace that label. Being an outsider is fine. Embrace the label because it's the outsiders who change the world and who make a real and lasting difference. The more that a broken system tells you that you're wrong, the more certain you should be that you must keep pushing ahead. This is a party that wants an outsider badly. I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. You must keep pushing forward. Never, ever give up. There'll be times in your life you'll want to quit, you'll want to go home. I can't do it. I can't do it. Just never quit. You will build a future where we have the courage to chase our dreams no matter what the cynics and the doubters have to say. You will have the confidence to speak the hopes in your hearts and to express the love that stirs your souls. And you will have the faith to replace a broken establishment with a government that serves and protects the people. They're not coming after me, they're coming after you. I'm just standing in their way. And I always will stand in their way. I want to be president of the United States. I want to find a cure for cancer. 
the choice to have an abortion alters the course of the future. Please remember, where there's life, there's hope. A message from Priests for Life. Priests for Life, saving lives for over 30 years. 1-800-273-7825.